today's video, we're going to be checking out the McFarland Toys Borderlands. This is Zero. Let's find out how tall Zero stands. Uh, tape measure is telling us that Zero is approximately seven and a quarter of an inch tall. Accessory-wise, comes included with the Borderlands display base. Yes, it does look rather familiar, doesn't it? It's the same display base that we've seen with the Walking Dead. They've done nothing different to it. Same top surface, that kind of ground surface, I suppose, and a singular peg, except you've got Borderlands on the front there. The Zero figure has one peg hole, so you can't make many options as to how you want to display the figure. It will only fit on the one foot. Other accessories include a blade, which has some nice metallic blue on the blade portion of the sword here. And there's also a peg hole. We'll talk about that in a second. Comes also with a blaster, which has some various outrageous color schemes to it. Nice metallic blues, turquoises, turquoises, and metallic purples. Of course, white in there as well. Really colorful blaster. And lastly, the other accessory is the zero marker, the little zero uh, display that's on the front. It's interesting how they've done it. As you can see, it has a clear hook to it. Instead of actually pegging to the front of the figure, they've done it instead where there's a little notch on the back and you fit the little tab point behind there. Resist the urge, if you will, not to push down on it. It's actually supposed to have a little bit of a gap. Even though they shape it in such a way that it looks like it should fit in further, but I can't seem to actually get it in any further than that. Any, any additional to that, I would run the risk of potentially breaking that. So that's as far in as it's going to go. And you've got the zero on the front there. It looks great. I mean, that's probably going to be how I'm going to be displaying the figure. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take that all off and have a look at Zero here. Rather skinnier looking figure, I suppose, by proportions to... Uh, we'll move everything kind of over here. By proportions to the figure we just recently had a look at. And there's Claptrap. Uh, again, a big stark difference between the two. I picked up both figures actually at the exact same time at the comic book store. I noticed that they both had them in stock, so I had to pick those up. I do really like the Claptrap. Zero, though, to be fair, is a really nice looking figure as well. Again, very very much on the skinnier side. Primarily going for the route of dark colors here. you got dark black, dark gunmetal silver, uh, regular silver, and what I could only describe as almost like a bluish silver color there as well. The helmet sculpt is really nice, uh, favoring a little bit of like this kind of scratched metal there on the side. Actually, speaking of scratching, not only do they put the wash in there of the darker color, but you've also got a little a couple of nicks and scratches in there as well. Some scratches also on the front, little dents and indentations there to the front of the helmet or the front of the head. Again, going the route of having this tab from the back rather than the front, means it keeps the front really clean instead of putting one big noticeable slot there where this could theoretically tab into place. So I like that they, they went that route. There's the back of the figure. Again, you've got more of those silvers and the blues. It really actually comes together very nicely on this particular figure. Very surprised as well by how much articulation this, this uh, robot, this, I guess this droid, not even sure really what what it is specifically. Again, I haven't really played the, the Borderland game at all. Uh, but again, a really thin build figure. A couple more of those little damaged scratches there on the on the back. It's a really detailed figure for the sense that it really doesn't have a lot of color driving it home. Going back to its accessories, though, I want to talk a little bit about the this sword, this blade that it comes with. Uh, if we look at the hands, the hands are distinctly sp uh, specified for what accessory that you want to display it with. Say, for example, you want to display it with the sword. You could put it in this hand, 
Although, to be fair, it doesn't sit very well. It's very loose. There's a little peg on the, uh, on the one side of the handle, which in theory is supposed to go right into here. The hands, though, are very clasp. They are very closed uh, shut. You can probably try your best to pry the fingers apart from one another just to kind of slide the sword in. Ultimately, what you just end up having to do is take the peg and peg it into the hole. And the fingers really don't do much at all. The thumb looks like it's, it's holding it, but the fingers ultimately just look like, it looks like the blade has just been kind of glued to the hand than anything else. So I guess if you want to display it, probably makes a little bit more sense to kind of display it down or display it in, a, in the way that it doesn't look very apparent. You won't see right away that it's not quite holding, not quite holding the sword. And then you can do the same with the blaster. The hands are much broader here, or much further gapped. We can take the handle portion here and just slide it into place. But again, yeah, it's just such of a nightmare to get the hands in place because a lot of times I'm just fighting to get it around those three fingers. And again, it just, I don't know, it just doesn't sit well for me, literally and figuratively. The blaster just doesn't sit well in its hands, and nor does it really look like it's attaching itself to the trigger. The hand, the, the hand, the finger here is way far back. It doesn't even look like it's reaching the trigger. I suppose you could try to stretch the hand, but still it doesn't quite look like it lines up the way it should. So mileage may potentially vary depending on how you want to have the uh, both accessories displayed here. Okay, so let's talk posability. And this one surprisingly does have a lot, a lot more than I really was expecting. The head rotates all the way around, a hinge up and down, has a ball joint of all things, universal joints on the arms. You can rotate the arms theoretically all the way around, but I have to admit that the, uh, the shoulder areas here are a dense plastic. So you're going to be fighting a lot. Let me just show you here. You're going to be fighting a lot to get the arm around. It's definitely going to stop you where it's going. Like, just stop right there. Don't go any bit further. The arms also can allow you to hinge the arms outward. You got the hinge in the elbows, rotation in the arms, rotation in the hands. We've already discussed the ball joint in the head or the uh, top torso area here. Slight swivel on the waist. Legs split out, forward and back. Got a bend at the knee, which also allows the lower leg to rotate. And lastly, you've also got an ankle rocker and forward and back on the feet. Let me just stop for a second. I'll put this guy right here. There we go. Let me just stop for a second and just take it all in. Let me just remind you that this is a McFarlane Toys release. He's quite a bit poseable, a lot more poseable than, say, for the for a lot of the color tops, for example. I don't know if I would categorize him. I don't think he's categorized under a color, color top, even though he really technically, Zero technically does come with the display base that other color tops would come with. It's a really nice, poseable looking figure, and it's got some cool details, even though a lot of them are very muted because of the dark colors that Zero possesses here. Zero the Assassin may not have the bells and whistles, perhaps, that the previously looked at Claptrap possessed, although I do think that Zero turned out to be a really nice looking figure. He's lanky, he's sleek, and while he doesn't have very bright colors, instead of favoring blacks, silvers, and grays, all those colors work very well to accent the scratches and the details that they've put into the plastic. He's super poseable, which is very surprising. I really wasn't expecting that, having already dealt with enough McFarlane toys in my day to know that McFarlane seems to really want to pull back posability. So for Zero to be as posable as he is, caught me off guard, I have to admit. His accessories, like I said, are very limited. He only comes with the sword and the blaster, which unfortunately don't sit rather well in his hands. The sword benefits from at least having the peg that you can fit into the hole, but the blaster really doesn't look as if it naturally fits well into his hand. In fact, it doesn't even look like he's about to fire off the blaster because his trigger finger is nowhere near the trigger of the gun. On, si on final looks, actually, I also want to commend McFarlane Toys for finding the means to attach the Zero to Zero's head without having a big noticeable slot on the front of his helmet. By being able to slot it in from the back, you do get the additional plastic roped around or wrapped around the top of his helmet, but that's a very small gripe for the fact that you can attach it to his head without a big noticeable slot. So, well done, 
Well done, McFarlane Toys. As a side note, why can't you put as much of this posability into all your other figure releases? Zero benefits from it, but I'm pretty sure some of the Walking Dead and other figure releases that you've done as well could have also benefited from this sort of posability. FYI. Today we were having a look, though, at the McFarlane Toys Borderlands. This was Assassin Zero. A nice-looking figure. If you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, make sure you do so. Many more videos will be coming your way. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.